be the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. In Jesus' name, I welcome you to worship here at St. Peter's on this third Sunday of Easter. Although we are apart, we meet by heart, and therefore, in the grace of God. Before we worshiped here, the life and spirituality of the Atikmekshing Anishinaabek preceded us. We worship on their traditional territory with gratitude, and we will seek to walk in faithfulness and reconciliation. The Paschal candle is lit today, not only for the season of the resurrection, but in its light, we also remember our neighbors in Nova Scotia who grieve. We trust in the healing grace of God. Let us pray together. We meet you, O Christ, in the ebb and flow of our lives. We hear you in the words we speak to each other, we journey with you through loss and renewal. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may we listen for your voice, trust your call, and be with others in your way. Amen. A reading from Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, 
Some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven. And those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Herein lies the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The road to Emmaus is an oddly comforting piece of the Easter story. Yes, we hang the celebratory day on the appearance and then the witness, I have seen the Lord, and we joyfully join voices throughout the ages saying, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia. But this story reminds us that not everyone's heart was lifted with the glimmer of new possibilities and emerging joy. This story stands as a symbol of what was happening to the wider community of Jesus' followers. While some hunker down, Cleopas and a companion leave town. On the way, a stranger approaches who seems to know nothing of the great drama that has unfolded in the city. The travelers are astounded. How could you not know? So it is with grief, the world going on. It seems bizarre. Doesn't everyone realize that you're in a vortex? Apparently, the stranger meeting Cleopas and his companion does not. So they tell him the story. It was probably therapeutic to tell it. The sudden arrest, the death, the missing body, how everything just fell apart. And their hopes. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. All that they had invested themselves in was gone. The plan, the dreams, the bottom had fallen out of their lives. The future was dismal. Disappointed, heartbroken, and I suspect that they felt that they had failed in this project. Who wouldn't? And now they were heading away from it all the memories, the hope, the associations, to Emmaus, to anywhere. In his book, A Grief Observed, C.S. Lewis writes about his experience during the months after the death of his beloved wife, Joy. 
About the first weeks, he says, no one ever told me that grief felt so like fear. I am not afraid, but the sensation is like being afraid. The same fluttering in the stomach, the same restlessness. At other times, it feels like being mildly drunk or concussed. There is sort of an invisible blanket between the world and me. I find it hard to take in what anyone says, or perhaps hard to want to take it in. He also writes, At first, I was very afraid to go places where she and I had been happy, our favorite pub, our favorite wood, but I decided to do it all at once, like sending a pilot up again as soon as possible after he's had a crash. Unexpectedly, it makes no difference. The act of living is different all through. Her absence is like the sky spreading over everything. Perhaps these disciples felt the same his absence over everything, a grief like fear, a grief with fear, a God-forsaken grief, and a compulsion to get away from it, to Emmaus, to anywhere. We know these things. We know this road. It is a largely unspoken but universally shared experience in life. This little scene in the Bible, we need to stay with it for a moment. It is sacred, this discombobulation of loss. It's been a hard week. A month into what some call sheltering in place and the novelty has worn off. And the work is harder, especially for parents working and schooling at home. And the worries for some are getting bigger. And it snowed all week. And communities in Nova Scotia experienced a most bizarre and violent rampage. Trauma is everywhere. And folks can't just rush out to hold one another. So many hopes dashed, so many futures ended, so much unknown. Where is God? Might as well go to Emmaus or wherever the best distraction might be, anywhere but here in the rubble. So Jesus came close to the travelers to Emmaus, although they did not recognize him. And grief does that. We grasp presence, holiness, and blessing way more easily when life is good. This isn't a spiritual failure. It just is. Shattered souls don't pick up those signals. Not with that invisible blanket between grieving hearts and the rest of life. He walked with them and talked with them, and they discussed scripture. They talked about the journey that God had made with people over time, all the mess-ups and all the losses, and all the wonders, and the songs, and the stories, and the promises. The long, wild ride of the centuries of the loving of creation and creatures. Though they could only acknowledge the awareness of it later, the travelers' hearts were warmed. It became perhaps more comforting than distracting, for they encouraged him to stay with them, at least for supper. I wonder what conversations have helped you in your sorrows. I wonder what kindness has brought you respite in the throes of grief. What connections are getting us through these dog days of isolation. Now we know how this story ends. The stranger agreed to stay for supper. He offered the thanksgiving over the bread. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Before anyone could say, Thank you, Jesus, could you pass the... He was gone from their sight. But they had recognized him. I wonder if one of the teachings he had opened up to them was one so dear to his own heart. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He broke the bread. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Now, they didn't have Leonard Cohen. But broken bread, broken hearts, broken community, broken faith. This story tells us that the travelers took all of that and made a beeline back to Jerusalem, right back into the anguish and uncertainty to sort out this broken mess together. And in that, they would find him again and again, but differently. They would find themselves again and again, but differently. And God, they would find God again, but differently. Over and over again, because bread. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. But why not Shazam? Instead, a blessing over bread. The bread itself is a blessing, but it points to the giver. The giver of earth and seed, of rain and sun and farmer and miller and baker. So the giver is blessed, thanked, praised. And in that moment, we stand in the awareness of all that is, and we are part of it. It doesn't dismiss the present chaos, but in an odd way, it embraces it. We stand whole or broken in the gaze of love, the gaze of the giver. Toward the end of A Grief Observed, C.S. Lewis talks about the role of praise in his healing. He said, praise is the mode of love which always has some element of joy in it. Praise in due order of God as the giver, of her as the gift. Don't we in praise somehow enjoy what we praise, however far we are from it? I must do more of this. By praising, I can still in some degree enjoy her and already in some degree enjoy God. And of every created thing, I should say, in some way, in its unique way, like God who made it. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Maybe it wasn't the bread itself, but the praise, the gratitude, the blessing that created a space for God and thus a space to see Jesus in a new way, and maybe a space to begin to imagine their work continuing. Perhaps the blessing led them from the notion of the taker and the taken to the giver and the gift that they had known the gift that had changed their lives so profoundly that really it could not be forsaken. 
This is a story. So the turnaround is fast, kind of like TV crime shows solving mysteries in an hour. But maybe here, in the midst of our losses and fears, our griefs and worries, in the midst of our solidarity with our Nova Scotian neighbors, perhaps here too, Easter can come. Maybe we can see the Lord in a new way. And maybe the key is in the blessing, the gratitude. If a table grace isn't your habit, perhaps this season is a good time to start. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Or maybe you could try a practice of five things you're grateful for at the end of each day and see where that takes you. Blessed are you, Lord our God, sovereign of the universe, who brings forth your life. Broken bread, broken hearts, broken community, broken faith, it's all part of the first Easter, and it may even be part of ours. But we go for the blessing, go for the praising, no matter how mundane it seems. The light will get in, the vision will clear, and when the time is right, we will be able to say with the faithful in every age, we have seen the Lord, for Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Much has been offered this week from the heart of faithfulness and in the spirit and name of Jesus the Christ. Time, tears, candles, 
food, money, a listening ear, smiles of encouragement. In all that we give, we are blessed, and the offerings go beyond us to support the lives and the hearts of others. Our generosity is a blessing. It carries the grace of God. Let us continue to give with joy. Now let us join our hearts in prayer. O God of life, you do not leave us. Even when we do not recognize him, the risen and living one walks with us. And so as we make the journey of faithfulness with you and each other, Grant us the courage to listen deeply to your word and look deeply into your world that in its exquisite design we may recognize and celebrate your gracious gifts, your vibrant presence, your deep and holy love. We turn to you with a sense of shared sorrow this week for the tragic losses suffered by so many families in Nova Scotia. On the wings of your spirit, we send the strength of our love and the companionship of our hearts to all who are suffering and to all who are helping in any way. We trust that you are already leading them to healing and pray that strength and new life may be known when the time is right 
by those who suffer these losses the most. And we remember also this day any who struggle or suffer or are in any kind of need or trouble. We continue our prayers for those who are helping us to be safe and to live well during these pandemic days. We pray for our leaders that they may be wise in their decisions. We pray for all who are finding these days harder than usual, especially those who are lonely, those without a home to shelter in, those living without a sense of safety, and those who are hungry, and all who feel lost, restless, hopeless, and depressed. By the strong wings of your spirit, may we see where we can be your hands and feet and bring your grace to this community as we can. We take a moment now and pray for those who are on our hearts and minds today, our loved ones, our neighbors, and our friends. We pray for the church that we might be your faithful people. And we take a moment now to pray for all those who have no one to pray for them. And living God, we pray for ourselves. You know our needs, and we open our hands and our hearts to receive from your grace. In the days that stretch before us, holy mystery, open our hearts to your power moving around us and between us and within us. Open our eyes to the renewal of life in the earth around us and help us to be the face of renewal and hope where we are be revealed in our love of both friend and enemy, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the healing of all that is broken. May peace come in our time, and may we be part of its making. We give you these and all of our prayers in the strong and loving name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace. May the Spirit of God breathe grace into our hearts and enliven our faith. May the love of God strengthen our hope and feed the flame of our love. May the living Christ, walking with us, give us courage to face the unknown in the life and the strength of his teaching. Go in peace knowing that the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer is upon you and remains with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.